morning, good morning. Uh, welcome. Uh, so this is our weekly Vinyasa Express. My name is Masha. And um, so for today, let's just say uh, it's good to have the two blocks. I have my props here. Um, blanket is always nice to have, um, you know, for your knees. If we are kind of doing a few things in our knees. And then I have a strap. It's optional, but also kind of like a nice to have depending on, you know, how your body is, right? But because it's 30 minutes, kind of keeping the pace a little bit faster, so we don't necessarily have all this time to do the props. Okay, having said all that, um, and once you have organized everything, go ahead and um, come to your mat. We're going to start on hands and knees, which is usually how we start in these uh, shorter classes. And then um, before you really set yourself up though, make sure you have your blocks. I really do highly recommend the blocks at the front of your mat. And then um, if you want to support your knees, you can take the blanket and spread it in the middle. So it's just a few little housekeeping things. And then go ahead, come to tabletop. All right, make sure that your shoulders are fully stacked over the wrists. Spread the fingers wide and make sure you work with wide fingers, right? Or this spreading the webbing between the fingers. And then just take a look, make sure your knees are underneath your hips. The um, tops of your feet and your shins are rooting down and your shins are parallel. So you're in a very symmetrical tabletop position. You're feeling stable and rooting. As you inhale, reach the chest forward for cow spine. And as you exhale, round for cow. And then take a few rounds of cat cows here on your own. Work slowly. And the idea for this uh, beginning right, is to mobilize the spine. So you can start to become aware of the way that there is a movement between the vertebra. Maybe the lumbar spine moves a little bit easier than the thoracic, which is usually the case, right? Try to move the entire spine from the crown to the tailbone. And then another thing that I like to do is really start to watch my breath. Drawing the inhalation through the nostrils rather slowly or at a slower rate. And matching the exhalations to inhalations. So the breath becomes even. And even though it's not required to have a formal breath practice called Ujjayi during a practice, you can, right, simply supplement your practice with this inhale, exhale at a low, slower rate and an evenness to it. All right, next time you come into a rounded spine, pause, press the floor away, lengthen the tailbone to your knees so the belly contracts. And just feel the spine nice and rounded. Feel the front line contracting. Tuck the toes and then lift your hips up for downward facing dog. And go ahead and pedal your feet a few times. And do that slowly so that you can maintain your attention on the breath. Right away when we change or shift into a different posture, we lose the breath completely. It's just a sort of a, how things work, right? But even if we lose attention to the breath, we can always come back to it. That's the nice thing about it. And it's relatively easy to do. So as you are bending one knee, straightening the other, feel free to kind of slow down that movement so that you can feel one leg versus the other or the same leg versus itself with each successive pedal. And you can press the floor away with your hands so that you are shifting the weight back, shifting the hips back. Have the head relaxed. All right, and then come to a still downward facing dog. Reach the right leg up and back, turn the toes to the right. 
and then see if you can lift a little higher, stacking the hip. All right, and then draw the right knee towards your chest, come forward to plank. When the shoulders are stacked over the wrist, press the floor away, you're back to your cat spine with a knee though hugging in, and then bring the right knee to the outside of the elbow and step the right foot to the outside of the right hand. You're stepping wide into lizard, lower the back knee down, untuck the toes, and then begin to soften into this yin variation of lizard. All right. Make sure the right toes are turned out a little to accommodate the direction of your knee. You have the option of coming down onto the forearms or maybe bringing the blocks underneath the forearms for additional support. Two more breath cycles. As you exhale, bring the hands back to the mat. Reach the right arm forward, reach it up, reach it back. So you're rotating and then bend the back knee and grab your foot from the pinky toe edge. All right, so at this point, you can allow the hips to soften once more, right? And you can continue to rotate your chest to the right. And just everything can be soft. So we're still sort of in this yin right realm where we allow the joints to open up using the weight of the body rather than any kind of muscular contraction release your foot circle the right arm back to the front tuck the back toes inhale lift the back knee and as you exhale straighten the front knee you can grab your blocks for support and here, find symmetry first in your hips, both hips square into the front. Back leg, right, you're on the ball mount of the back foot and your heel is lifted and stacked and the back knee can be a little soft. Reach your sternum forward along the central axis of the map. So you're very much still very symmetrical. The only thing that's creating asymmetry and possibly confusion, it's this right leg that's turned out to the right. Work on uh, drawing the right quadricep up, up, up towards the hip so that the knee straightens. That's sort of what we're working with. All right, and then release. Turn the toes to the left. Face the left side of your mat. I'm going to be in a wide-legged forward fold. As you inhale, extend your spine forward. As you exhale, bend into the back knee. Bring the right hand down under the sternum and reach the left arm up, twisting towards the bent leg. Right, inhale, reach up even higher. Exhale, circle the left arm down to the floor again. And start to bend deeper into the back knee. Flip the right toes up. You're coming to Skandasana Lunge. Bring your hands to the heart center. That's an option. They can remain down. If your hands are at the heart center, point your tail down and extend your crown up. Release the hands. Walk them down the front. Come to Runner's Lunge. You're going to frame the front foot. And just bend into the front knee, look forward. As you exhale, step forward, fold over your legs. Inhale, halfway lift, extend the spine, fold, roll up to standing and reach up. Exhale, Tadasana. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold, hinging at your hips. Inhale to extend the spine. Plant your hands and step, step to plank pose. First iteration, tap the knees down and tuck the toes and again root tops of your feet and shins. Begin to extend the tailbone to the heels and draw the chest forward until the Shoulder blades are firm on your back. Inhale. Exhale, bend your elbows. 
about halfway pause, broaden the collarbones, and squeeze the elbows to the ribs. Lower belly, pelvis, chest remains high, shoulders remain high, right into a baby cobra. Inhale, and as you exhale, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in, and exhale, press the floor away, sitting bones tilt up. Reach the left leg up and back, turn the toes to the left, and then stack your hip. So both legs are straight and strong, especially the aerial leg, right? And then bring the left knee in towards your chest, come forward plank. Press the floor away, you're in a cat spine. Tap the knee to the outside of your upper arm. Step the foot to the outside of your hand and begin to descend into lizard lunge. Back knee comes down, untuck the toes. Make sure your toes are turned out to accommodate your knee. And then option to start to really soften down into the hips. You can come onto the forearms or use props. Three cycles of breath. At the bottom of your exhale, bring the hands back to the mat. Reach the left arm forward, reach it up, reach it back. So you're rotating, bend the back knee, and hold on to your foot. Hold to the outer edge of the foot here. And don't do anything. You're just simply letting the weight of the body right, traction down. And then release. Circle the left arm back to the front. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. Inhale, and as you exhale, straighten the front knee and fold. So this is a wide pyramid shape. And as such, right, you are probably challenged in some ways because there is this symmetry versus asymmetry. So the hips are still squared to the front. And then the back leg is along its own sort of rail, if you will, right? So just come into the bum of the back foot, lift the heel, soften the back knee. It's the front leg that's creating asymmetry because it's turned out at this angle, right? Which is usually, we don't do this usually in this particular shape. But continue to nevertheless extend your sternum forward along the central axis of your mat. Right, and then maybe soften, 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 but you're softening forward, right, not over your front shin. So your hands and your torso to the inside of the left leg. All right, and then release. Walk the hands down the right side of the mat. Come to face the side here. Legs are wide. Inhale, extend your spine. Exhale, uh, bend into the back knee. Bring the left hand down under your sternum, reach the right arm up. Inhale, twist. Exhale, circle the right hand down. Bend deeper into the back knee and flip the left toes up. Spend off in a lunge. Option to bring the hands to heart. Draw the tail down and reach the crown up. And then release your hands. Walk them down the mat to come forward into a runner's lunge. Inhale, and then step forward as you exhale. Extend your spine, halfway lift, fold over your legs, roll up to standing, reach up, Urdhva Hastasana, exhale, Tadasana, at the top of your mat. Go ahead and still heel the feet in so that the big toes touch. A little space between the inner heels. Really root down through all of your 10 toes. And as you press the thigh bones back, lengthen the tail and lift the pubic bone. Pelvis is neutral, front line is engaged. Crown is extending up. Inhale, reach up. Urdhva Hastasana, exhale, fold, 
Uttanasana. Inhale for a halfway lift. Plant your hands and step, step, plank pose. So we're beginning our sun salutation sequence. Shoulders stack over your wrists. Lift the fronts of your thighs. And then lengthen the tail to the heels as the chest moves forward. Inhale here. And as you exhale, rock forward, bend your elbows. Pause in Chaturanga. Elbows squeeze. Collarbones broaden. Lower down slowly right into a baby cobra. And then straighten your elbows upward facing dog. Shoulders over the wrists. Chuck to make sure that's the correct alignment. Really spread the toes behind you. Press them down. Pull the chest forward to the upper arms. Exhale, downward facing dog. Five cycles of breath. Soften the knees, soften the elbows. And then rotate the uh, biceps up to the ceiling. Elbows can straighten again. Draw the inner thighs down towards each other. And then you can start to straighten the knees. So directionally, upper arms rotate externally. Upper thighs or thighs, thigh bones, rotate internally. Step the feet together, lift your heels. Soften the knees, look forward, step, step, or jump. Come into a halfway lift, fold. Come up to standing, reach up Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Tam Dadasana. Inhale, reach up. Fold. Inhale for a halfway lift. Plant your hand, step, step, plank. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, Chaturanga. Upward facing dog from there. Inhale, downward facing dog. Exhale, five cycles of breath. Continue to spread the fingers if you forgot about that. Shoulders um, or hands are shoulder width. All right. And really just press the floor away. Soften the knees so you can do that. It's a weight shift back. Let your head hang. Let your ears be by the biceps. But continue to rotate the biceps up. Feel the triceps really firming in towards each other on the upper arms. So the upper arms are really engaged. Step the feet together, lift your heels. Soften the knees, look forward, step, step, or hop to the top of your mat. Halfway lift and fold. Come up to standing, reach up, inhale. Exhale, Tardasana. Good. Bring the hands to your hips. And here, really feel Tadasana first in both of your legs. Leave the left leg in Tadasana as you bend the right knee, turn it to the right, and bring your foot into a tree pose. Continue to rotate your pelvis to the front, all right, as the knee rotates out to the right. And then option to bring the hands to your heart or extend up. If you have extended up, Move the arms and the rib cage up, up, up as you're down from the hip to the heel. Bring the hands back to your heart and then you're going to slide the right ankle in front of your knee and begin to bend the knee coming into a figure four chair. Keep the right toes flexed and don't let the right knee drop. You can rest the elbows on the thigh or on your shin rather, sorry. All right, and then from here, take your blocks, put them on the highest height in front of your mat. Hands come onto your blocks, and you're just going to slide the right foot down and step it next to the left foot. Standing table. Standing table, you're in symmetry. Shoulders over the wrist, hips over your heels. As you inhale, reach the left leg straight back, leading from the inner thigh. Left toes curl down, hips are level. All right, so this is warrior three. Option to get light on your fingertips. Option to bring your hands to the heart for a more challenging variation of warrior three. 
And then as you exhale, soften the front knee, step back, warrior two, open the arms. Once you land, straighten the front knee, begin to reverse, let a right arm over your ear. As you exhale, reach the right arm forward. Continue to reach it forward, don't go down just yet. And press the outer edge of the back heel back as you reach the right fingers forward. Then bring the right hand to your shin, left arm up, Trikonasana triangle. Make sure that the back toes are actually angling forward. Sometimes the foot rotates in the wrong direction. Right, draw the sitting bones towards each other. Extend, extend, extend the sternum forward and maybe the ribs rotate even more. Reach the left arm over your ear, circle it down to the floor. Come to face the uh, left side of your mat. Inhale, extend the chest. Exhale, skandasana, bend into the back knee. Flip the right toes up. Hands can come to your heart center. Or arms can extend in the same way they did in tree pose. Bring the hands back down to the floor. Walk them to the front. We're going to come to lizard lunge, which means that the right toes are going to be to the outside of the right foot. And you're going to be on the ball mount of the back foot with your heel stacked. This time, though, keep the back knee off the floor. So we're taking a more traditional lizard, right? Right knee, right toes facing in the same direction. Option to descend onto your forearms. Interlace the hands. All right. And then imagine that you're drawing the tail back. Scrub the forearms towards the back foot so your chest can come forward. and extend your crown away from the back heel. And bring the hands back to center. To heel the right toes into the midline, runner's lunge, inhale. Step forward and fold. Feet together, halfway lift, fold. And bend your knees, come to chair pose, Utkatasana. And as you exhale, Tadasana at the top of the mat. Stay for a moment in Tadasana and just feel the stability of this posture, but the energy as well. And then bring the hands to your hips. Leave the le uh, right leg in Tadasana, bend the left knee, rotate it to the left and come to tree pose. Left foot to the inner thigh or maybe calf. Continue to rotate your hips to the front. Hands can come to heart. Arms can extend up. And bring the hands back to your heart. Slide the left ankle in front of the right knee, figure four chair. Flex the left toes and don't let your left knee drop as you come down, down, down. Maybe you're resting your elbows on your shin. Release the hands to the blocks and slide the left foot down next to the right standing table. As you inhale, reach the right leg straight back. Lead with the left inner over the right inner thigh. Right toes curling down. You're coming to a supported version of warrior three. Make sure the right leg is parallel with the floor. So really do lift. Option to come light on your fingertops and bring the hands to the heart. Warrior three. Level the hips, right? So you're not going to let the right hip hike up. And then soften the front knee. Step back, warrior two. Open your arms. So even if you sort of did not have a graceful transition, that's okay. It's nice to teach the body these transition moments, right, of instability. Straighten the front knee, left arm overhead. Inhale. As you exhale, sitting up for triangle. Start to reach the left arm forward. Reach it forward, press the back uh, heel away. Right, so press away from the back heel as you reach the left fingers forward. Then bring the hand down to your shin, right arm. Sitting bones draw towards each other, sternum extends forward. 
And then you can roll your ribs up for a really kind of extended and free version of triangle. Reach the right arm overhead, circle it down to the floor and come to face the side of the mat. Inhale, extend the spine. Exhale, bend into the back knee, skandasana lunge, left toes flip, hands come to the heart, possibly the arms extend up. And then take the hands back down and walk them to the front of the mat, coming to our lizard lunge. In our lizard lunge, it's, think of it first as plank pose, all right? That's what the back leg is doing. The left toes are turned out in the same direction as the knees start to come down into the forearms. Interlace the hands. You can definitely use blocks here. Back leg is in plank, all right? Press the heel back, draw the tailbone to the heel, and then scrub the forearms forward so your chest moves forward. So this is a forearm plank, right? But it's a lizard. Bring the hands back to the floor. Till heel the left toes forward, or I'm sorry, in, so that you come to a runner's lunge. Inhale, and then step forward. Halfway lift, fold, chair pose, bend your knees. Instead of bringing the arms forward, bring them to your heart. Start to bend your knees until you come all the way into a squat and then sit onto your butt. Good. Extend your legs forward, give them a little bit of a shake. And then re bend your knees. We're going to take boat pose, core exercise. Mm -hmm. Start by just holding behind your knees. All right, as you do that, think about your sitting bones, which are triangular and, and kind of pointy. <laughs> plug down into your mat. And as they plug down, you're going to extend up and away, right? Getting the spine into sub length. Keep your spine in length, shift back, lift your shins. And now your shins are parallel with the floor, point to flex your feet. And then you're gonna extend your arms forward, palms face each other, and energize to the upper arms as you begin to extend the legs. And five cycles of breath. At the bottom of your exhale, come all the way down onto your back. Take a moment, and then we'll just do one other thing, which will be bridge pose. Bend your knees, make sure your heels are underneath the knees, and the outer edges of the feet are parallel with your mat, okay? Shuffle the shoulder blades towards each other, lift your hips up. And then either interlace the hands underneath you or hold your mat. If you have the interlace going, make sure that the arms are grounded, which means that the elbows are straight. If you can't sustain that, just hold the mat. Step down through the inner heels, ball mounds of the feet. Roll the inner thighs down. and point your knees forward. All right, roll the upper arms from the inner to the outer. So external rotation in the upper arms, internal rotation in the inner thighs, very similar to down dog. And then release and lower down. Widen your feet and let your knees knock in towards each other. Take a moment here. Come to watch your breath once more because I bet you that in bridge, the breath got caught and didn't recover. <clears throat> Take a deep breath in and exhale. <clears throat> Excuse me, option to take closing posture here. So closing posture, anything that feels good or decompressive or both.
I'm going to set up for a final rest. So if you need to grab props, please do. Blanket over you. Great. Start to set yourself up so that you don't need to move for the next couple of minutes. <clears throat> let, the, let the floor just receive the back of your body and allow the front of your body to collapse down as well. Deep breath in. Exhale. Good, and then just stay soft. And then take Shavasana here on your own for the next three to five minutes. And I thank you so, so very much for joining me for this short class. Hope you have a wonderful week, and I hope to see you again next week.